Welcome back to EMP PsychWorks. My name is Joe. I'm the owner and lead mechanic here at the shop. Today, uh, we got a fun little project. We got a 2014 Street Glide that we're going to be putting a, a nice little cam in. A uh, cam is from Jim's Performance V Twin. It is the Maxell T905A. Customers really looking to get a a good cami sound out of this thing, nice and low B. Um, so with this cam, we'll be able to get that and have a pretty nice boost in performance. So. Let's have some fun. All right, first step, let's get rid of the saddlebag. Uh, these newer bikes have these easy latches. Right, next step is to get rid of the crossover pipe here. So I'm here with some WD-40. Uh, remove this clamp down here, uh, just a simple little bolt, half inch drive. This exhaust clamp is a 15 for some reason. And then we're still going to take the nut all the way off, just loosen the nut. Oh, we got to loosen these bolts and then pull, up, pull it off, simple as that. Now you want to hold it and don't let it fall, we loosened it on the other side already, so. And then just wiggle it back and forth and pull with your left. Wiggle it with your right. Come off. All right, now we need to get rid of this floorboard here. Hold it with a 916 nut on the other side. Quarter inch drive ratchet. Quarter inch drive Allen. That comes off. Yeah, we got the uh, O2 sensors under here that we have to get rid of. So they snake around, they plug in right here under the side panel. Can't really swap, mess them up because they're different colors, correspond to different colors here. So it's a matter of cutting a couple zip ties. We're going to get rid of the clamp that mounts to the bottom of the, of the transmission cover here. All right, remove that nut. So now we got to get rid of these exhaust nuts. Um, usually spray them with WD-40 just to lube them up. Because they tend to rust. If you ever had one of those break on you, you know it's definitely not a good day when that does happen. And so I, this is my setup. Snap on half inch, half inch socket, quarter inch drive um, swivel, 12 point. And the snap on's good. I don't know if you can see that on the inside of there, there's a there's a hole on the inside that, that lets the stud pass through it. So it's really excellent for taking these off. And I always use a quarter inch drive. I never go to a half inch because I don't want to put a whole lot of force on this, on this nut. That's how the, the studs get broken. Right, once you got the exhaust nuts off, Helps to um, try to back off the clips or the uh, tuners, tuner plates. And then we do the same thing in the rear. Pop these off. And I want to hold it so it doesn't. And with any luck, it also comes off. Alright, on this particular job we got a set of quickie push rods, so we don't have to take the tank off or the rocker boxes. Um, the, the cam is a bolt-in cam, uh, I believe it's 573 lift, so um, these, uh, these newer motors can handle that without, without having to deal with the springs. So um, We'll pull the plugs off, jack up the rear wheel, put it in, in a 6 gear so I can spin the wheel and uh, spin the motor at the same time. So here's how I do that.
front plug. All right, so my drag special is flat jack here, and you want to place it underneath. There's a crossbar that's a flat bar here. You don't want to use um, like a, a jack that you jack up your car with in the middle of it because it will bend that. Flat jack, great to have. Just, just any in any circumstance, uh, working on your bike. Now we got the rear wheel. Now we got the rear wheel off the ground, and I want to just slightly spin it and, and put it into six gear. And that way, when we spin this, it's actually rotating the motor. Because to unload the push rods, we're gonna have to cut them out, and you can't. You don't want to cut them out when they're under the tension of the uh, the valve springs. Um, I don't know what will happen, but it it'll be bad. Um, you could get hurt or you could probably possibly damage some components, so best way to do it. Time to get this motor open. Um, in order to get to these push rods, the stock air cleaners are kind of big, so I got to get this off. Um, first thing would be to take this cover and just pry up on it. It's uh, Velcro. Remove this nut. And he needs an air filter. That is just disgusting. All right, these are T25 Torx. Just pop them off. Like so. All right, so. These hold the breather cover bolts, or these breather tubes have to come out. As they are covering the breather tubes, or the breather bolts. Seven sixteens. Now there's a little plug here. I'm gonna unplug that. That actually works the, the throttle blades. So now I have just enough uh, clearance to, to get the push rods out of there. Flat screwdriver. All right, now I expose the push rods here. You can see that, so intake spins and the exhaust does not. So what I'm gonna do is hold, hold on to the intake push rod. So the exhaust is on the outside, the intake is on the inside. I'm gonna spin the rear wheel and feel the, the, push, the intake push rod. So it's gonna go up and come back down. Once it comes back down and it's able to spin, the exhaust should spin and we are if not at top dead center compression, we are we are approaching it. So we don't have to be super accurate as long as both of these spin. Take our big ass bolt cutters. Cut the push rod. And you will use bolt cutters. You don't want to use a cutoff wheel or anything because you don't want any metal shavings going down into the lifter or into the engine in general. All right. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is get rid of these these lifters. So. Loosen up these lifter blocks, I'll pull them out. Let's go. 
gasket. This came up. They have anti-rotation pins that you gotta remove. Very, very important. Now I'm gonna take these lifters out and soak them in my fresh oil. And I'm going to mark them. Uh, this bike is, with this cam, is getting new lifters, but um, I have to measure the crank, so just in case, I want to make sure that I can put these lifters back in, because if this crank is bad, there's no reason to do any of this. <clears throat> so I'll pull the lifter out the same way it came out, the same, the same orientation, and what I'm going to do is mark this is the rear exhaust. I'm going to put an R E on the outside so it can go back in exactly the same way. And I'm going to inspect the lifter. Same thing with this one. And this is the rear oh, rear intake. And then we'll move on to the front. Front exhaust. This is the rear intake. Crack open this cam cover. Same thing as before, I usually crack open the bolts. Then use my snap on gun to pop them off. Or unscrew them fast. Um, I used to have air tools, but air tools are fine. It's just you have to drag around the airline and it's a pain in the ass. So these battery power tools just got to make sure you have a charged battery and a good battery because they don't last very long. Crack it open. I don't know if you can see that, but from the timing, we were fairly close to top dead center. I mean, that would have been top dead center right there. So, remove the tensioner. Anytime I do this, um, I'll replace the shoe. The actual the surface of the tensioner fueling makes a, a, a really good one because those are a wear item and they're cheap so this one doesn't really have much wear on it at all so that's good so the good thing about having it in fifth gear is now we can depress the brake And use the rear brake to help us break these loose. So, I don't want to use my impact to break them loose. Um, theoretically, it could spin the crank. I don't think that would actually happen, but we don't. We don't. We don't want to take any chances. set. So now it's a matter of removing all these bolts. So I'm going to pop the oil pump off first, break these loose first, then I'm going to break loose cam plate bolts. Come out. Pops right out. So I took some of the oil pump with it, but here's the cam plate. 
little baby cams, normal wear, but can definitely do better. And here's the oil pump. Now on inspect. The outsides and the inside of these I don't see anything glaring. So there's a outside pull rotor, which I believe is the feed um, spacer plate. And then you got a wave washer. Another spacer plate, and then your sump. And this one has something to go through it. That's not good. Uh, they had a little something, something go through it. That's not good. Other than that, the oil pump looks good. It had something go through the return side, though. Alright, so... Do a quick little check. I got my magnet. I got it... Cleaned. Yeah, I'm gonna stick it in the sump or the oil oil pan and Let's see if there's anything in there. And no, I don't see any metal on here, so that's a good sign. And I didn't see any... There's no evidence of that going through the... That, that debris going through the, the pump... Uh, the pressure side. So he's lucky. So I'm going to get my setup and we're going to measure the pinion. And here's my setup. And... But in the wheel, we have looks like we have just over three thousandths run out, so um, cranks in, in real good shape. I just did one yesterday that had thirteen thousandths of run out, so you know, right there is three. So he's uh, he's got a good uh. Good bottom end here, so we're clear to go on the cams. Um. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.